Tom, as you have gone through this very, very long gospel, uh, did anything new strike you as like, oh, wow, I haven't seen that before? Various things have jumped out at me. And, you know, I've spent a certain amount of my life over the years looking at Matthew, Mark and Luke and John, but the three synoptics side by side. But a couple of things. One was um, that frequently in passages which have a parallel in either Mark or Matthew or both, Luke has added the note of praise, that at the end of a healing story, people are praising God. And for us, that's so natural that we don't really notice it. But if you look up the words for praise in uh, the concordance, there are far more of them in Luke than in the other gospels. And another thing which only occurred to me very recently was that in Luke's gospel, there are several people in tears. Jesus has said, blessed are those who uh, weep for they will end up laughing. Um, and we can see, uh, here's the, the woman whose son has died in Nain. She is weeping and Jesus says, don't weep. And here is um, the woman who comes into the Pharisee's house and anoints Jesus' feet and, and wets them with her tears and so on and so on. And then in that terrifying word in chapter 23, Jesus says, daughters of Jerusalem, don't weep for me, weep for yourselves and for your children. And again, in the middle of this, this is one of the rare moments with John 11 as one of the only other ones where Jesus himself is in tears. And it's as though the message of consolation, which is what we're told Luke is all about. You know, this is people looking for the consolation of Israel. This is about people in great distress finding comfort and consolation. And I hadn't seen before the extent to which that really is a Lucan theme in a way which it isn't for Matthew or Mark or John. Mm.